Live from our hurricane headquarters with real-time analysis from some of the nation's top meteorologists, this is Tracking the Tropics, powered by Bose Electric. Sarah is no more, and the tropics clearing up right in time for your Thanksgiving turkey, mashed potatoes, and stuffing. Well, exactly what we like to see, but is there any chance for any tropical activity over the next two weeks before we say farewell to the 2024 Atlantic hurricane season? That's our focus on today's edition of Tracking the Tropics here in your hurricane headquarters. I'm J.B. Buno. Welcome in, folks, with meteorologist Rebecca Barry. And, of course, our featured meteorologist today joining us from KARK in Little Rock, Arkansas, meteorologist Joel Young back on the program. It's good to see Joel. We'll be hearing from Joel in just a second. We'll be hearing from really both of our meteorologists in just a moment. We're going to be, of course, tapping into Facebook Live for your questions on this episode of Tracking the Tropics. Use any of the hashtags that you see on your screen. Hashtag hey JB, hashtag hey Joel, hashtag hey Rebecca, and we'll get to our meteorologist Q&A in just a moment. But first, Rebecca, all eyes are on what used to be, Sarah? Yes, and so we really like it when systems fall apart fast because then we don't have to go through all the different litany of names and classifications if it's a post-tropical cyclone and then a post-tropical depression. And, then, and so this is just what's left over, the remnants. This thing fell apart fast over the Yucatan Peninsula. And I also want to... Um, show you the best thing I've seen in months, basically since early September. And that is, if you are to pull up the National Hurricane Center seven-day forecast, it says no new storms expected in the next seven days. All right, can we just hit the uh, hit the applause button for that? Yeah, no, no, this, this is exactly what we what we love to see. We like to have this by October, but we were, we're a month late. We're getting it by Thanksgiving this season. It was a really, really backloaded season. It didn't follow that t- traditional bell curve that we see a lot of those systems, uh, uh, a lot of the seasons following. And so nothing left of Sarah, but I did want to show you that it's actually kind of juicing up our cold front that's moving through tomorrow. And so the remnants of Sarah are drifting northward across the Gulf. We've got one of the first powerful cold fronts of the season for the southeast sweeping through Texas and Louisiana yesterday, through the deep south today and eventually headed our way as we make our way into tomorrow and so that's going to provide us with a juicy round of downpours and then a big cool down right behind it so sarah's enhancing our chances for showers tomorrow with the cold front that's pushing through kind of overnight tonight early tomorrow morning is when the first of the rain arrives so that's all that is left of sarah that cold front clears us out and then we've got high pressure sitting over the southeast particularly over our state and so when we talked about that traditional bell curve where we see the most a- activity in the tropics, it's typically between the first two weeks of September really is the peak, and then it goes down steadily from there. But we got a really heavily ended October this year, and now we're finally getting the decline that we expected you know, weeks and weeks earlier as we make our way towards the very end of hurricane season there. I did want to point out that in late November, early December, they do have um, – some tropical, a higher instance of tropical storms than hurricanes. So anything that does form is weak, like we would, what we just saw with Beth. It's more likely to be weak if we are going to see something forming in this time period. That's the difference between the red and the yellow on that graph there. You can see that the red still stays kind of elevated through November, whereas the yellow really declines. And that's due in part to sea surface temperatures as well as the kind of formation patterns that we see this time of the year. And so it's all eyes are still on the Caribbean this time of the year. Storms that typically form in the Caribbean um, are warded off by cold fronts like the one that we've got pushing through tomorrow and that keeps them mainly east of the state of Florida and out over the open Atlantic so if we do see any more development which we don't anticipate at this point that's the most likely forward motion that we would see so we've got to add Sarah to the list here and so next we only have three names left on this year's list Tony Valerie and William I don't anticipate that we're going to end up using those this is the GFS kind of showing that front pushing through and the high pressure pushing in behind it and that kind of clears out the Caribbean we talk um, a lot of, uh, all the time about how the second cold front of the fall, the second big cold front of the fall really shuts down the Gulf. And so that's kind of what we're seeing here is that second cold front. It's on the way. We had a weaker cold front last week that kind of cooled us down. And then we're, we're looking at that second cold front moving through right now and uh, probably shutting things down for us, which is what we are hoping for and what we are Uh, really, really looking at. And I just wanted to pull up that seasonal forecast that people put so much stock in. Uh, We really didn't come that close to the number of named storms for NOAA or for CSU, thank goodness, um, as a result. So that's kind of the the 
takeaway from this season is that it it only takes one storm. You know, it, it doesn't necessarily matter if you get the big numbers or not, if you get storms that impact your area. And then looking at that beautiful, beautiful site, no new storms expected for the next seven days. Yeah, so uh, we're going to really hone in on really uh, the season as a whole in our, in our final episode or what we anticipate will be our final regular episode of Tracking the Tropics uh, next week. But let's bring Joel in here. Joel, um, the chances of activity, I mean, it says no new storms expected over the next seven days. We have a little bit more room there uh, beyond seven days in the month of November, which, of course, officially makes up a hurricane season. We have seen in the past where an X on the you know NHC's map will show up really out of nowhere. Is there any, what are the chances in your estimation that we see something between now and the end of November or really now and the end of the year, because we know that December storms, even though rare, they are somewhat oh so slightly possible. Sure. I mean, you know, I've been, I feel like this season we've had so much activity coming out of that Central American gyre, the Southwest part of the Caribbean. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we still see some activity there, but I don't think we're necessarily, as you mentioned, you know, you get these cold fronts that come through and it starts to shut things down in the Gulf. Uh, it'll probably shut things down to some extent in the Caribbean as well. So do we get any more named storms? I wouldn't be shocked to see one maybe develop and affect some of the Central American countries there. But uh, as far as actually getting in the Gulf, we're going to be getting more cold fronts. I mean, that it's that time of the year. Uh, so whatever does get in the Gulf, I think, you know, like Sarah, uh, get sheared apart. Uh, so that is at least my hope, my thinking, but, um, you know, we'll have to see going forward there. Absolutely. And hoping for really quiet La Nina uh, for the Southeast as well. Uh, winter sure. typically a little bit quieter, a little bit warmer. And so with the cold fronts that are finally arriving, it feels like they've been a couple weeks late as well. Um, we're looking at our first big cool down and that is the turning point for sea surface temperatures, they don't respond nearly as quickly as air temperatures do. But once we start sure. to get the fronts, those sea surface temperatures really start to come down as well. So that's going to help us out immensely, especially with all the shear and then some slightly cooler sea surface temperatures. I think a lot of us are ready to just kind of hang tropics up for the season and move on. Absolutely. And Rebecca, I do want to build on something you mentioned earlier. Uh, you refer to this as a kind of a backloaded season, how we've seen so much activity uh, in the second half of the season. And um, I wish I could say exactly where I saw this, but I've uh, been doing trying to find a little bit more of the why. I've seen where there's been some correlation between a backloaded season where you have more activity in the second half of the season and during La Nina is how you can get more frequent cold fronts. We've talked about with our viewers uh, that be because of this uh, as a possibility, maybe we get some colder snaps in the month of December for us here in Arkansas. Uh, we don't have to go very far back to find a season that is an example of this would be uh, 2022. You guys had Hurricane Nicole that affected Florida, and it wasn't a few weeks. It wasn't very long. A few weeks later, right around Christmas, we had a deep cold snap that came through here and it was pipe breaking weather there um, through Christmas. So I don't know if y'all are aware if y'all heard anything about that correlation. If you can point me direct to the direction of any research that's been done all on that, you know, I'd, I'd be interested in it, but yeah, that would be fascinating. Um, here in Tampa, it's it's hard to tell the difference between 73 and 78 sometimes. So those right. cold snaps aren't quite as dramatic as what you guys <laughs> get up there in Arkansas. Um, but certainly the disruption in the jet stream does seem like it would be a lot more viable. You know, once you get the energy uh, pulling thing, you know, air masses down uh, towards low pressure systems like hurricanes, that at that point in the season when the jet stream already is a little bit more volatile, I can certainly see how there might be a correlation there. Yeah, definitely. So curious, you guys, there were all the models last week that showed Sarah curving into the Gulf, curving uh, potentially uh, into the state of Florida. We had talked, in, and here they are, Rebecca, pulling them up right on cue. Uh, we had talked about this, again, for people just joining the show, if you're seeing this and freaking out, this is, this is a graphic that we had built last week for what Sarah was anticipated to do. But I'm trying to understand what exactly happened to Sarah and whether or not these projections were considered to be accurate or inaccurate, Rebecca. Well, obviously inaccurate since we're not looking at, at a stronger storm headed here. But what the nuances that we're not considering is how much time it spent over land. And right. it, it wasn't incredibly formed when it got to, when it started to move over land. It, didn't, it did not race over the Yucatan Channel uh, and the Yucatan Peninsula there. It really lingered there. And so some of the mountainous regions did a number on it. But also what models 
uh, do not take into account is what month it is. And so they, they do take into account a lot of the factors that would have predicted Sarah weakening, but it's just not taking into account you know, all of the different dynamics that Sarah might have been up against because it is November instead of August. And so I think that that's a, a weakness in the forecast model. And that's one of the reasons you have human forecasters looking at all this data and saying, eh, I think there's still a lot of uncertainty here. And so normally when you look at forecast models that are this close, you would your gut would say, no, there's there's a ton of certainty that we're going to be looking at a panhandle storm or a Florida storm within two weeks. But this month with a lot of the shear that we see, with a lot of the features that we expect to develop, like the front we're dealing with tomorrow and that's already halfway across the Gulf, we, we can say, no, you know, as, as forecasters, we know that, that there's not as much certainty as if this were a September or an August storm. Joel, anything to add there? Yeah, I was just going to say, uh, I think it was a couple of things. You know, the fact that I think some of those original models that had it curving and hitting Florida, and Rebecca, you mentioned, it didn't take into account how much time was going to be spent over land. I think some of the original spaghetti models that I remember looking at had it kind of threading that needle between Cuba and the Yucatan and then curving up through Florida. Of course, that, if that was the case, then you'd have a stronger storm. But also when it did take that, what you know, it took more of a Western track. It went over the Yucatan, spent more time over the Yucatan. But as soon as it got off the Yucatan, it was in, it was in that sheared environment. So uh, it didn't last very long, obviously. Well, of course, we're going to be keeping our eyes here on the tropics over the course of the remainder of hurricane season and even into December, even though December storms are, are extraordinarily rare. Uh, but Joel, um, considering that, uh, this is going to be your last appearance on on tracking the tropics this season. Um, what do you think that the 2024 Atlantic hurricane season is going to be remembered for? And what are some of the other storylines that you think are going to be of note when we look at this season years from now? I think, uh, you know, I think it's hard, hard to think about this season without thinking about Helene. Of course, Milton was terrible and uh, some of those, but Helene, just the anomalous nature of how, you had it going over such high mountainous terrain, an area that's already vulnerable to flash flooding, and then an area that had already been affected by a lot of heavy rainfall in Western North Carolina before Helene hit. I think that's going to be, that by far has to be the storm that's going to stand out in so many of our minds when we think of the 2024 hurricane season. Uh, Milton, and for y'all, I'm sure Debbie would be memorable as well. So, uh, but I do think just the anomalous nature of, not just Helene at landfall, but Helene when it made its way inland. That was just, I think that takes the cake. Yep. Uh, definitely the storms that we will be remembering and storms that will likely be retired off of the list for future uh, hurricane seasons. I'd like to thank Joel Young from KRK, Little Rock, Arkansas, joining us here as part of Next Star Nation on Track in the Tropics. Really appreciate Joel's time. Of course, uh, exactly. give him a follow on social media, you guys, as part of the storm team there uh, in Arkansas. Uh, meteorologist Rebecca Barry, myself, will, of course, uh, be looking at the remainder of hurricane season on next week's track in the tropics at 1230 Eastern, 1130 Central, as we kind of put um, somewhat of a bow, I guess, if you will, on, on the 2024 Atlantic hurricane season. We'll also keep you posted on any development on trackinthetropics.tv. For Joel and Rebecca, thanks for joining us. I'm JB. We'll see you next time here on Tracking the Tropics. Find Tracking the Tropics on these platforms. And for storm updates, the latest models, and helpful resources, visit trackingthetropics.tv.